Welcome to the second episode of Rijnatsins in which I'm going to repair a Cork microcontrol. It's a nice little controller, but its actual controls can go bad over time. All of them, including the keys. So let's have a close look and see how we can fix that. Encoders can go bad over time. Uh, typical symptoms are making big jumps when turning the dial or no response at all. Very rare encoders, you can go down the route of cleaning the internals, but it's better to replace them with new ones. Um, the sliders used in the microcontrol are not the best quality ones and might fall apart over time, so yeah, replace them. The third problem I'm attacking is the joystick. This one has an integrated push button and the plastic push mechanism has a broken lever in it, which is not repairable, so we have to replace it completely. And last but not least, the keypad. I really do not like this keypad, it's very spongy, has small keys and is unresponsive to play keyboard parts on. But to enter chords and melodies, yeah, it's just fine. The rubber dome contacts can go bad and I had a fun time trying to get them conductive again. Tried several techniques and finally had to go nuclear on them using a deoxid fader 5 to get them going again. So here we go. <laughs> Replacing an encoder is very much like making love to a beautiful woman. You have to understand how she ticks. Okay, sorry. Whatever. Um, 
Encoders are very much alike. It can be replaced with anything you might have lying around as long as it physically fits. Just be careful regarding the number of detents and how many pulses it, pulses it generates per full rotation. Uh, I made this error while replacing an encoder on a Cork Triton LE and had to order the encoder twice, second time with the right characteristics, so please pay close attention. Um, detents is the number of physical clicks you feel when you turn the shaft per full turn. And pulses, that's the number of pulses per full rotation, where a pulse is a change from, uh, from either A or B, uh, output from off to on and from on to off, so one cycle. Uh, when a pulse number, with a pulse number half as much as the number of detents, with each one detent click turn of the shaft, you only have a half a pulse generated on the A or B output from off to on or from on to off, depending on where you are. Um, you can test it by hooking up uh, the two outer pins of the encoder to a multimeter in continuity mode, which I did here, and you can turn the shaft one de detent at a time, and you will hear a small uh, continuity beep when the A signal is on, and nothing, of course, when it's off, and here you have it. With the pulse number being the same as the number of detents, with each one detent tick of the turn of the shaft, the A or B output of the encoder generates one complete pulse from off to on and from on to off, so one, one pulse. Again, tested with an encoder, each one detent turn of the shaft generates a short pulse, as you can hear here. Now the Cork microcontrol needs an encoder where the number of pulses equals the number of detents. So the one I've listed here you can use. Or if you have another one lying around, you can cut the shaft to length if it's too long and use that one as well, whatever you want to do. replacing the sliders. Um, if you search for the slider using the part number in the microcontrol service manual, you will find nothing on the usual uh, part platforms. Uh, but lucky for me, I did a Cork M3 repair a while ago and the sliders I used there fitted perfectly. They are, however, they are just two different. First of all, the shaft of the slider used is a bit too long compared to the one used in the uh, microcontrol, but this you can cut off with a wire cutter. And secondly, the resistance value is different. Where the microcontrol uses a 5 kilo ohm slider, the M3 uses a 10 kilo ohm. But if you look at the schematics, it's just used as a voltage divider, so it doesn't really matter if it's 5 or 10k. Of course, I tested it and uh, I didn't find, find any problems. So I went on to replace the faulty ones. Uh, cut just a tiny bit of the slider shaft and they all fitted and worked just fine. The joystick was not repairable so I had to find a new one. Now first I have a look at the Cork microcontrol service manual and page 4 shows the joystick. J002T10KB. Hmm. Part lists, zoom zoom zoom. Ah, J002B10360. What? Okay, okay, let's google this one. Hmm. Great. Mm. Um, search for analog joystick. Ah, no, that looks more like it. After a bit more searching and measuring, I found that the Alps RKJ series uh, is the one that I need. Uh, pin spacing fits exactly, and more importantly, the joystick shaft has the right shape and size to fit the joystick top end. Um, finding a seller was a bit harder, but I found a cheap one on eBay from a seller in uh, uh, Shenzhen. Yeah, I know. I took the gamble and received the parts two weeks later. Remove the old one, put on the new one, joystick top fitted perfectly. Next. Great. <laughs> really great. Normally, if the keys on the keypad do not make good contact, you get uneven velocity responses or keys working intermittently or not working at all. My first go-to method is to clean the contacts on the PCB and the carbon rubber contacts on the rubber domes with 100% alcohol. Works most of the time. But not this time. So we tried a second method, which is to touch up the contacts with a, a pencil, a HP pencil, a soft pencil. But yeah, that didn't work either. So I went nuclear and used some deoxid F5 on the rubber domes. I sprayed it on cotton buds and cleaned the rubber domes with them. I left the dry bit and then after putting it together, all keys were working again. Um, I d however, I did notice over the next days that some contacts were actually improving, uh, especially on the velocity response. So now only one key has an uneven velocity response. 
However, if you set the velocity or sensitivity of the keybed somewhere between 4 and 1, it will do just fine and you won't notice. Good enough for Austria.